Pulse Radio is invading your airwaves. Be on the lookout. Geeks and gamers. Hey, sports fans. Welcome to the Sports Wars Podcast. I am Bryce, your host for this wonderful episode here today. We have an, another exciting show in store for you today. Joining me to help break things down is from the Geek Pulse Gaming Podcast, Aaron Mo- Aaron Morris. Excuse me for butchering your name, buddy. That's all right, man. CEO of Geeks and Gamers, Jeremy Greggs, and Jay Cutler's number one fan, David LaRock. How's Jay everyone Cuddy. doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, Aaron's got to be really excited uh, after Jay Cutler proved he's a GOAT. So I, I really want to hear Aaron's thoughts. I just, I mean, it would be a little bit sweeter. As sweet as it is, it would be a little bit sweeter if he was still playing for the Bears and it was the Bears-Patriots <laughs> game. But... <laughs> If it was a Bears Patriots game, there's no chance they probably would have won anyway. So I mean, I'll just I take it where I, I can get it. I didn't even watch that game, and I looked at the score at the at the end. I'm like, what happened here? The the, the best uh, the best thing that came out of it was that meme where it said, uh, "Humbled a humbled Tom Brady is going to uh, take on Jay Cutler's diet," and it showed him <laughs> walk around with like a sandwich and a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yes, like yes. this is this right here is almost worth the loss just to see this meme right here. <laughs> So no filter camels. <laughs> <laughs> that was glorious. I did never, never would have expected that. All right. You know, like I saw this one guy put on there. It says uh, a Patriots loss is just as sweet as an Alabama loss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much what, what the fo- football world likes. Alabama and New England losing. Everybody is happy. So That's fine. Well, well because uh, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban have joined a dick anyways. Pretty much. Their throw besties. Ur- throw throw Urban Meyer in there for a uh, trifecta for a yep. sandwich, but that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, let's get into our first news topic of the day and get into some news. Uh, the playoffs are right around the corner, but things have changed in the NFC when quarterback Carson Wentz tore his ACL on Sunday. It was reported on Monday by uh, that Carson Wentz's knee could make him miss part of the 2018 NFL season, because according to Dr. Andrews. Um, he said that his knee, not, not speaking to him specifically, but a torn ACL takes about nine to 12 months to recover. And I don't know, we don't know if he could be ready by the start of the 2018 season. So David, um, what do you make of this injury and how does this play out for the rest of the NFC? Uh, Philly's done. Um, now don't get me wrong. Nick Foles, they'll probably still get the number one seed just because they have a shit ton of talent. But what Carson does so well is make plays with his legs. They are the number one team in third and six and longer. And Wentz can create shit. Obviously, we saw that against L.A. Pretty much, pretty much how, how he tore his knee is what makes him so good. The fact that Nick Foles can't run and can't do anything, that's, that's going to just show the bigger cracks in the offensive line in general. Um, and it, it's just – it's it's a terrible, terrible situation. Um, ironically, the football gods taketh away and then they giveth when Aaron Rodgers came back, but that's a different topic. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Philly's it, – it's, it's brutal to lose your quarterback this late in the year when, you know, they pretty much manhandled L.A. for the most part. Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, I, I hated to see it happen. I think Wentz is a uh, great – I think he's got a, a great future ahead of him, but LaRock nailed it. I mean, the thing that makes him great is the thing that got him injured. I mean, it was, that was a dangerous play that, that he was going for and uh, it sucks. I'm not as, I'm not saying that Philly's the same team by any means. I'm not, but I'm not ready to give up on him completely. Foles is a decent, you know, respectable quarterback. He's not a pro bowl quarterback. He's not a superstar and he's never going to be, he's probably one of the better backups in the league at this point. Um, so I think him coming into that situation, if they continue on with the number one seed, like the NFC, it's, it's kind of hard to know who's who at this point. I mean, the best team in the NFC right now is a team that doesn't have a good quarterback. I mean, I guess you can call Case Keenum a good quarterback because he's playing good, but he's not a good quarterback. Nobody was, wanting Case Keenum to be their starting quarterback in the offseason. So the NFC is is a pretty tough division right now, but I don't know if you have a clear-cut front runner in the NFC. So I'm not ready to give up on 
Philadelphia being a potential Super Bowl team still, uh, considering they have a guy who has had like what did what did he go a few years ago under Chip Kelly twenty twenty eight and two. 27 and three, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I mean, the guy, again, I'm not saying he's a superstar or anything, but he's a respectable guy to come into the, there and plug in it. Obviously, though, he basically walks around with cement blocks compared to, you know, Carson Wentz. He can't run, he's not mobile, but we'll see. I mean, they still have a strong running game and maybe have the number one seed. So it sucks that it happened, but I'm not ready to just throw Philly season away at this point. Well, at least he's a quarterback that has some experience playing. Right. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, that that goes a long way, especially in this situation. And if you can put him in a position to succeed and if you have the number one seed going into the playoffs, which that's still up in the air. But that's a good situation for you to be in a guy that's done it in previous years, been successful. And now he's put into a situation where he's can possibly succeed. I, I think it's Again, clearly not not exactly what Philadelphia wants, but all things considered, it's not the worst situation in the world either. What could be the worst situation in 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 the world? To have to have Geno Smith as your backup and not Nick Foles. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I, if, I, if, I mean, I'm saying if you take the think of all the backup quarterbacks in the league right now, I would have to say Nick Foles is is among the top five best. Sure. Guys, you know, based on experience, based on what he's done. He's serviceable. So, yeah, exactly. That's the best word. Sur- Service. Serviceable is not yeah. going to win you a playoff so, game. Uh, yeah, but when you have a good team and, and, and you have home field advantage and you're looking at the division right now, I mean. Oh. David, David, let me put it to you like this. Would would you consider Rex Grossman a serviceable quarterback? Uh, No. Okay. Well, he got to no. a Super Bowl. He so. did, but he also had a very stacked defense, and he had Devin Hester for special teams. Right, and I mean the Eagles have a pretty great defense, um, but a couple of decent receivers, a decent Carson, running game. But Carson Wentz masked a lot of their a lot of their weaknesses, which was the offensive line. They don't do anything particularly well. They're they're always behind in the chains, like like the LA game. There was like a third and twelve, made it happen. Third and eighteen, made it happen. Like he he can extend plays. The moment Nick Foles was in, they're trying to run the same stuff, and he's getting walloped. Yeah, I think Nick Foles is going to probably end up falling into the the using Zach Ertz as like a safety blanket. A safety, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. which could be good and could be a problem also. But to what you said uh, about losing your quarterback this late in the season, how terrible that is! Like it's terrible at any part of the year, but it's it's like that Oakland uh, game. I was just about the playoffs to up, last yeah. year, right? I mean, it's it is the worst possible time to to have your superstar quarterback go down. And then going forward, just the emotional, just the locker room presence, knowing that your leader is done. And it's, you look up and it's like week 15. Like it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's a really it, shitty situation. It's, def- it's definitely not a good situation, but like I said, all things considered, Geno Smith or Nick Foles. So sure. you're not, it's not as bad <laughs> as it could be. That's all I'm saying. Hopefully they'll call Tebow. Whoop. Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. So <laughs> then he live in Philly. <laughs> Tebow can be wherever Tebow needs to be. And Tebow's lie. everywhere. He's, Tebow's he's everywhere. In, yeah. yeah. He, he sees all. He is everywhere. He's like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the NFC play uh, playoff picture, um, well now that Carson Wentz is out and Saints and Rams are displaying all kinds of vulnerabilities and the Seahawks are up in the air. Um, Aaron Rodgers has been cleared to come back and to play for the Packers and start this Sunday. So Eagles are basically done. Like David said, um, Jeremy, do you think this changes things up in the playoff picture where Aaron Rodgers coming back? hundred percent. I think this is going to be massively important for green Bay. They, they were somewhat decent. And when I say decent, that's a very low bar ball or low bar that they needed to meet when Aaron Rodgers went down. They lost a couple of really ugly games, but they performed pretty well in some other games, and they still have a chance to make the playoffs. And I think that now with Rodgers walking back in the door, the the morale on the team is going to be extremely high. And you look at what's happening to the top-tier teams in the NFC. If they come out this weekend and beat Carolina, I, I think Green Bay is in great position. Obviously, they still need help, so they need to win out, and they need help. And I think that – it just feels like this is a great situation right now. I, if I'm a Green Bay fan, 
I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic right now. And uh, I just feel that, that there's something special that could happen uh, with him coming back. He broke his collarbone, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was the right. second time, right? Second time in uh, like a- different, different arm. Different arm, okay. Um, but which side, which side did he break it on? Uh, the right. And he's right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how well he yeah. can throw it. Yeah, I mean, if he's medically cleared and he wants to come back, I mean, obviously he feels like he can come out there and and, and at least make a difference. And um, I just think from a morale standpoint, it's going to make everybody on that team. I mean, they've played. I think they've done better than the media tried to make it out that they would because basically they were saying like they were going to lose every single game now that he's yeah. gone and, and they were competitive against Pittsburgh uh they won a you know, they won the gauntlet game with the uh the Cleveland Browns which is they always should have lost that game <laughs> no I know but but they did but they, they won did yeah they won some they were competitive in other games and then there was a couple of games where they were just completely just demolished and that's expected when you lose someone like Aaron Rodgers but well at least at least Brett Hundley did a decent job Hunley's a decent quarterback. He he's never going to be, I don't think, a, a a starter on a week to week basis. But he's he's proven to be a very very good backup quarterback. So as again, if you're a Green Bay fan, I think I think you should be super excited. Obviously, we need to see what he does on the field once he gets back throwing the ball. But it's going to be pretty cool. That's going to be an interesting game to watch for sure. Uh, Aaron, fuck Green Bay. Uh, why i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wish Bears fan i'm oh, not yeah. gonna wish i'm not gonna wish injury on uh aaron Rodgers, but i hope he comes down with a fucking flu or pneumonia or something and goes back out but <laughs> what jeremy said about green bay needing help from other places besides winning out um that i don't i can't off the top of my head i don't know what minnesota's remaining games look like um but i'm assuming they'd have to lose a few uh to help out green bay uh I don't think Detroit. Yeah, I don't know the picture, details. Really. Yeah, I don't know the details of who. I just know yeah. that they said that they're going to need help. I don't know who it is though. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just I I don't. Aaron Rodgers or not, uh, I if I had to make a prediction, I I don't think they make the playoffs this year. Uh, Aaron, going back to what you asked, uh, Vikings play the Bengals, Packers, and Bears. And all games that they could win, easily. So, but the, so the Packers and and the Vikings are head to head. So that that could be a really important matchup right there. Depending, yeah. really, it comes down to this weekend. If they beat in Carolina, is going to be a tough matchup. So if they win against Carolina and Aaron Rodgers shows that he can throw the ball effectively, I'm just telling you, watch out, David. Sorry, I'm dealing with a Dark McStuffins issue. Um, so if you're if you're Green Bay and Aaron comes back, why why do you want him to come back? Like, is this not like a Tony Romo, one bad hit he can break it again? Like, I I just I how do we know he's gonna be good? How do we know it's not gonna happen again? It's Aaron Rodgers. Well, do you think he should have sat out the last three games? <laughs> I mean, okay, so their schedule is okay. They play Carolina. Not the easiest defense, and then oh, congrats! Then you got Minnesota. I'm, I'm like, they're not going to get in. I mean, but you don't know that their secondary is awful. I mean, I get it, but look, if you've won games and you were competitive with Brett Hundley, even a Aaron Rodgers at sixty five percent gives you a better chance to win. But why risk the future? So, like, what happens if he's well, running well, around? Well, and see, it I, hate, I, I, I hate that mentality. So, why even play? Because every time you step on the field, you're risking the future. I get it, but not so soon. Like, I get it. He's medically cleared. But he literally just had 12 pins removed. Who in that organization, just like if Tom Brady – who's going to tell Aaron Rodgers, no, you're not playing? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. And And he hopefully – If you you want to talk about futures, you know, maybe the Patriots should have kept Jimmy G. That's a completely different – are you you on crack? (laughs) That's, no, but, that's no, okay, that's, no that's don't, 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 get him, bad don't, get him, don't get him started, Bryson. <laughs> I saw the but, opportunity and I took it, Dan. But, Go ahead, but no, but like, okay, so we criticize like uh, Aaron's boy. We Jay Cutler gets annihilated for being, you know, on the sidelines, on the not giving a shit. Right. But now you're saying now you're saying Aaron Rodgers shouldn't should be doing what Jay Cutler got criticized for, which is trying to be a little safe with his you know, body, like you, you can't win in these situations. I see, but I see both sides of it though, too, because what you're saying is right, Jeremy, and what David is saying is right also. I, I feel like both sides of this are, are correct because 
yeah, maybe Green Bay doesn't have a shot this season, which is what David's getting at. But with Aaron Rodgers healthy at 100% next season, maybe some decent, decent uh, you know, pickups in the draft, whatever the case is, they always have a shot next They're going to get blasted by Minnesota. Yeah. We don't. Again, you're 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 assuming. The bottom line is, did you think they were going to get annihilated by Pittsburgh with Brett Hundley as their quarterback? No, they should have fucking won. Actually, exactly. but then again, Pittsburgh's secondary is not all that. I, I get that, but the bottom line is, is Green Bay without Aaron Rodgers against Pittsburgh at a at the time they were what eight and two. Sure. I mean what did you think was going to happen? Nobody thought they were going to win that game and they should have won that game. So I'm just saying, you don't know what's going to happen. All you know is your best player, your franchise is healthy. You have a mathematical okay, so, opportunity to make the playoffs. So what what's, happened to Green Bay's record? Green Bay's um, seven and six, I believe. Yeah. And what's, and what's Minnesota's? Uh, They've lost what? Three times. I think so. I think so. They're so what? Nine ten? and three. Yeah, nine and three. Yeah. I think so. So, what happens this week when Carolina steamrolls over them? Again, at what point does Aaron Rodgers hang it up and be like, you well, know what, we're not going to come back? But if you don't have a mathematical chance, then yeah, that makes more sense when you're on when you have a if you're kind of if you're injured and not a hundred percent. But they have a mathematical chance. He's the franchise. He's a competitor. He wants to come back and give his team the best opportunity to win. I think that's exactly what we want from our athletes. We don't want to see the franchise sitting on the bench when your team needs you. And, and you, you, all you can do is control what you can control. They have okay. a mathematical chance. He can, he can literally make them win out. And what's, then just, what's ironic is Miami and Green Bay has the same mathematical chance to get into wild card. Look at it this way. Let's, let's just kind of reverse the table a little bit. If this was – Tom Brady, would you be saying the same thing? Oh, my God. I'm just saying, you got to look at it from his point of view. If this was Tom Brady. But same, see, you same, can't, but you can't, but you can't answer that question because it's so different because Tom Brady's 40 years old. Yeah, and he has four <laughs> rings. But, <laughs> but it's a joke. That's a joke. No, ultimately, ultimately what it comes down to is if your team has a shot mathematically, you put your best players in and you take the shot. That's it. That's that's the way I'm looking at it. Again, if if they get annihilated and, and Aaron Rodgers comes out there and looks like Geno Smith this week and they get annihilated, then, yeah, you set him down for the rest of the season, get Hunley some reps for the rest of the year, and, and let Rodgers heal up for next year. But you still got a chance at this point. That's all I'm saying. I can see what and I'm not, look, I'm not the biggest Aaron Rodgers fan. I think everybody knows this, but it, it makes sense. And I'm happy as a competitor. I'm happy he's like, hey – I'm medically cleared. I'm coming back on the field, and I want to play. And I, I like that. David, if you ever become a coach for your daughter's game or whatever, I could see I could see you be that kind of coach. You have no chance. Sit out the rest of the season. <laughs> you can't do this. There's no I mean, mathematical way you can do this, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could see you be that parent. Maybe. Maybe so. I'll let you know. I mean, I'll help you coach. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, stay on the subject about playoffs here and just look at everything right now because the playoffs are literally right around the corner. So if you look at it, and if the playoffs started today, you would have the Falcons would be the sixth seed, and they would play the three seed Rams. The fifth seed Panthers would play the fourth seed Saints, and that would be your NFC wild card matchup. The Eagles, as of right now, would be the one seed, followed by the Vikings would, would, would be the second seed. On a side note, I think it's kind of cool having three NFC South teams in the playoffs. It's kind of like having two SEC teams in the playoff, but but cooler. Um, on the AFC side, you have the Bills at the sixth seed play, playing the Jaguars, who are the third seed. Then you have the fifth seed Titans taking on the fourth seed Chiefs, and, and that will be your AFC wildcard matchup. Steelers, as of right now, will be number one. The Patriots will be number two. Um Aaron, my friend, how do you see everything moving forward, especially what we talked about in the NFC side? Because all that side is going to be shaken up in the I next mean, few weeks. I mean, to, to get down to, like, the actual business of it, are you asking for, like, a, a Super Bowl prediction here? No, like, uh, yeah. like, how do you see things playing out moving forward? Because we basically talked <sighs> about the NFC side. I mean, yeah. but there's so many games left the, to be played. We, I, I know. There is. And where do the Rams fall into all this? They're, they're right they're now the wide, second seed. They're right wild card right now. Okay. Um, 
I, I honestly think in the NFC, it's, it's – the NFC is pretty crazy right now, but uh, I could see the Saints and the Falcons kind of heating up and being that team this season. Um, with the AFC, I just – I just have that feeling in my gut that it's going to be another Patriots year. Um, I'm sure that Jeremy and David aren't too upset with me saying that, but uh, I don't think the Pittsburgh Steelers are as good as some people might think they are right now. Um, Great receiver, obviously, and great running back. Uh, I just don't think that, I think that this is Ben's last year. I don't know. Especially because I don't think they make it. So Right now, it's kind of – I just don't see – I don't see anybody getting around New England. So, they still have everybody and all the pieces in place, and the defense continues to get better, with the exception of the Jay Cutler game, because uh, he tore you guys apart. So. <laughs> Which is a completely different story. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> if only he wasn't a Bears yeah. uniform. <laughs> no, but uh, I don't think the AFC uh, – uh, just from uh, – uh, obviously, personally, the AFC is exciting to me because – Patriots, but the AFC is pretty much it's going to come down to New England and Pittsburgh. There's not a whole lot to debate there. The well, NFC. So on speaking of that, um, of course, you know we'll get to that game later on. But you know the pa- Patriots play the Steelers, right? If Patriots lose, oh, is that is that this week? <laughs> like you don't have that circled? Oh, this shit was circled. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, okay, hypothetically speaking, if they lose that game. Jeez, and what <laughs> happens if they win out? You want to have that argument too? But I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at the future. So I don't if really they think lose, there's a chance. And Jacksonville wins out, there's a chance that, yes, New England could drop to the three seed. That was, that's what I was asking you, asshole. However, <laughs> if they win out and they blow the doors off Pittsburgh, then you've literally just wasted five minutes of my life. <laughs> and I think that's, that's more likely. I think it is too, especially because uh, a New England team coming off a loss yes. to somebody like Jay and, Cutler and a is a scary loss. is a yeah, scary a thing loss. is a scary thing to have to play against. So I think you, I think you just like say that word, Aaron. Jay Cutler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when you lose to Jay Cutler. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, so let me let me get back on. So yeah, the AFC is pretty much a two horse race at this point. Um, that's going to come down to you know. New England and Pittsburgh, and we'll find out everything we need to know this weekend. So the NFC is a mess. Go ahead. I know that's what that's what I was gonna say. Like so, basically the AFC for the next three weeks is pretty much stable. However, the NFC is gonna be kind of up in there because, like I was saying, Eagles are the one seed. Now, hypothetically, if they lose the last three games, everything gets shooken up. Yeah, I don't think that's likely that him to lose the last three games. But uh, who are they playing? Do we do we know who the last three games are? Uh, they play um, Oakland this week, I believe. Yeah, that's a losable game. But both of the, I guess I can't. Oakland's a mess, so uh, I, I can't. I don't think you can rely on them. Oh, sorry, no, no. Oh, so yeah, they yeah. play the Giants, Giants. Raiders, then Cowboys. Yes. Okay, and so those are three winnable games actually for for uh, Philadelphia. They yeah, can win all three of those games. Yeah, I mean it's winnable, but even they're 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 not even winnable. Those are pretty likely. To, they can, okay, so I would say one of those games is a lock almost. The Giants. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Raiders is. I, I think that's a, a, a toss up, fifty fifty. Uh, the Cowboys game. Uh, it was Zeke. Zeke's done for the. Yes. No. 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 Zeke. Zeke's back. Um, this. Zeke's back this week. Oh, then, then they're gonna the the giant they're the Cowboys are gonna wax them then in that final game of the year. But like I said, overall the no, NFC next week, next week, next, next week. Okay, so yeah, but the, the NFC is just it's chaos. There's so many interesting storylines going on. Even the number one team that that or the team that looks to be the number one team, which is Minnesota, nobody trusts them at this point because of the quarterback. Even though Keenum's yeah. playing good, nobody really trusts them. So I just I'm fascinated by the NFC. So I still think the damn saints have a shot. Now that'll yeah. make Bryson happy. So, but I mean, really, I mean, you give Drew Brees a running game and yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm I, right now as it's currently, as it currently stands with Aaron Rodgers being uh, a question mark with his health, green Bay's mathematically on the outside looking in 
Uh, you've got all these quarterback crop problems with the top teams in the NFC. I, I think right now the most trusted team for me on paper is New Orleans because of Drew Brees with a running game. That's my most trusted team in the NFC. Right that kind of also worries me just a smeech because you saw when Kamara went out, you saw how much – That the, was also the, a short week. I know, but I'm, what I'm getting at and is – And you have to throw that out the window. It was a short week when the game – when 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 you take Kamara, who's such a, a, a big piece of that offense, and you, and you remove that on a short week, you are now simplifying the offense. Plus, you're playing a divisional game. Plus, there were some questionable calls, whatever. Just and, that's a, that and, that's a, and that's a definition of a, of a rivalry game in the NFL. Yeah. Like yeah. That's, that's, a, that, that's one of those games that you can't put a lot of stock into either one of the teams, how they play. Just like with – you can't put a lot of stock into New England losing to Miami because they typically always struggle in Miami. They didn't Seven lose to nine. Miami. They didn't yeah. lose to Miami. They lost to Jay Cutler. <laughs> that's true. So, right now, as it stands – as the NFC is structured right now, I'm saying my most trust – I'm not saying that they're my prediction, but my most trusted team right now is the New Orleans Saints. To That's win the team. NFC? Yeah, I mean, who else do you trust? You, Drew Brees with a running game? That's who I trust. Can, all things considered, all these quarterbacks, all these problems, absolutely. That's my, that's my team that I think is, is in be, the best position right now. Where are they at in the seeding as, as it stands right now? Fourth seed as Fourth. of right now. They, they need home field. That yeah. they do. That's a that, There that's is a 0% different. chance they're going to win in Philly. That's true. In January. That's that not happening. True. That is true. Yeah, because we so, don't do well in the cold. Well, Drew Brees doesn't do well outside, period. I know. So, I that's mean, why he'll never be better than Tom fucking Brady, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> they call, make a whole other pod about that one. <laughs> I mean, you know, looking at it, too, I can I could definitely agree with you. I mean, Panthers, you you just never know which Panthers team is going to show up to play. Which is a good thing or a bad thing. Yes, exactly. Um, Falcons, it's kind of a question, too. Rams, maybe. I don't know. Vikings, eh. I mean, Eagles, definitely not. I mean, even if they went out and get um, – get that first round by, and then whoever wins the wild cup plays them. I don't know. I don't well, I, again, just look at it. Who, based on what, what, everything, how it currently sets, who do you trust the most out of those teams that are in contention? I wish, I wish New Orleans had home field. Yeah, that's, that's about that's, the only thing you can say negative to them. That's, about that's them. my thing. Like, I mean, if they, Sean, Sean Payton's Sean, Sean already got his Baker Mayfield behavior out of the way for the year. So, I mean, he, <laughs> if there was a way they could get the two seed and legit have home field pretty much throughout, then they would be my lock. If, if the Vikings continue, if the Vikings lose probably the last three games and New Orleans wins the next three, maybe. Yeah, Minnesota's not going to, Minnesota's going to win this week and lock up the division. And then they're going to beat the tar out of Green Bay just because it's Green Bay. I think that Minnesota and uh, is the same. I, I feel the same about Minnesota as I feel about the Rams. It's just they're just so similar. Like teams with great defenses, good running game, and like a quarterback that I don't know if you could trust to make it to the end. Accurate. So, that's about right. Yeah, I mean, well, pretty much. You know, AFC is just pretty much a a, a lock up. Like you said, it's a pretty stable about who everyone's going to be at nfc is just a real big scratch your head one too because you look at it on paper there's so many things that can factor out in the next three weeks that's why we watch every week yes sir recording i mean but larock knows everything that's going to happen because analytics so hey if <laughs> i really wish wentz didn't get hurt like that that sucks like in general did that throw your whole algorithm off no just i mean i wanted to see philly new england and now, now I hope it's Philly, New England. <laughs> hey, you might get a New England Saints. I would love that. I would too, because I will come over. Um, you you would probably leave at halftime. <laughs> I'll, I'll still... you guys have zero zero people to guard Gronk. <laughs> that, yeah, and that was basically that was your whole offense. Me. Your whole offense happens around him. Well, that's like saying LeBron's the entire Cleveland offense. When when you have good people, you 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 use them. What kind of dumbass statement is that? Because LeBron is the Cleveland offense, and Gronk is that guy. <laughs> I'm just trying to piss you off, Jay Cutler. <laughs> Broke the tension right there. 
<laughs> Next question. All right. So that will do it for the news section. So now it's time to move on to some rapid fire because last week's rapid fire was funny as shit. I mean, I thought I had, to, I thought I had to drive over to Davis' house and start doing CPR on him over there. And none of us I'll try know not any to of walk these out. questions. None of us know any of these questions. So yeah, yeah, this David. Don't, David, don't walk out like you did last week. I'll try not to. Well, don't don't say stupid shit. I didn't say stupid shit. I asked, I answered one of your questions that you left the room on. That's because I was so upset from the previous question. I had a, I had to lower my blood blood pressure. Well, see, right. I, I asked you that two. Question. Will you two? Will you two quit bickering and move on? Let's go. <laughs> question one. <laughs> All right. So these questions come straight from our community. So if you want your question featured on here, then I suggest you join our Sports Wars group on Facebook. Our Sports Wars admin, John Morgan, will post a Geek Pulse Radio discussion thread where you can submit your questions for us. That'll happen on every Monday. All right, so now, our first question. Ten seconds I'll give you to answer it. Julio versus Antonio Brown. Who is the better wide receiver? Let me give it to David. No. um, On a straight athleticism, it's Julio. Um. You know what? Fuck it, Julio. Good job, Julio. Just just for the fact that what he did against New England, like that guy was double bracketed and still made some baller ass catches. That one catch he made on the sidelines was, was stupid. Super human. It was super it, human. It was. It's yeah. So Julio, but I mean, it's one A, one B. Next one. Other than the college football playoffs, what are your most anticipated bowl games, Aaron? Uh, I have no other ones because I don't give a shit about any other ones except the <laughs> Alabama Clemson game and then the Alabama Georgia game for the national title. Yes, oh. yes, yes. That was a great answer. All other, just just a real quick, and I, I know I'm over my time, but bowl games don't mean anything anymore with the playoffs. If you're not in the playoffs, you don't have anything. There's nothing. You don't Those games anything. are not special anymore. It's true. I mean, it used to mean something. It really is. It it really is irrelevant now. All right, next question. The top two teams in the NFC are now led by Nick Foles and Case Keenum. Which one will shit the bed in the division around at home? Jeremy. Um, I mean, if you're looking at what Case Keenum has done, he clearly has chemistry with the team he's on, and Nick Foles is going to have to come in, and they're going to have to kind of revamp what they did because he's not the same type of quarterback. So I'm going to go with Case, being the guy who's going to be in a better position to succeed. Not so bad. Nick Foles is going to shit the bed? Yes. Okay. That was a really good question. That is a good yeah. question. Mm, I wonder who um, submitted that one. <laughs> is that why you guys don't do that on this podcast? You don't say the name of the person that sent the question in so that David can just get all his questions read? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you about it afterwards. Um, next question. Is Jimmy G the best quarterback in the state of California, uh, <laughs> David? That's, that's another good question. Uh, <laughs> going forward, absolutely. Take him over Goff. In fact, I, I would take him over Goff and Carr right now. The only one I would not take over would, would be Rivers. Interesting. He's okay. proven he's proven himself already. He's so good looking. He, he, he's probably – like objectively, he's probably better looking than Tom Brady. If, I mean, if it wasn't for Tom Brady being Tom Brady, oh, only because he's a handsome man. Tone. Only because yeah. of skin tone. So but, like mine. This is really no, what's happening darker. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen him? I mean, you'd be the same way if like, I've, I've seen him. You, 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 knew, you know where he's. You know where he's from, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Aaron, Guys, Aaron, Aaron, but Aaron's already made the claim that Jay Cutler is more handsome than Tom. Have Brady. you seen the picture of him on the beach? <laughs> looking out the looking out onto the water yes 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 we okay. have do enjoy, you have any of those enjoy. of tom brady yeah. okay. yes no kind of oh next question. i mean i mean he did sunbathe in italy when he was on his four game suspension last year all right moving on moving on <laughs> all right i'm gonna probably butcher this guy's name so francis versus well how do you say his name stipe miocic stipe it's okay Stipe versus Francis in the upcoming upcoming title match, not only for the title belt, but basically the status of the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Who do you think will win this fight? 
since Aaron's the only one that watches yes. UFC. Aaron. Thank goodness. Thank goodness you gave that to Aaron. Um, <laughs> it, it, uh, it's either going to – I mean, it's hard to say. Um, I think Francis wins, uh, but if it ends up going the distance, uh, Stipe is going to take it. So, if you had money on I'm the taking fight, would it be? Okay, uh, real, real, real quick, I'll say this. Even though Stipe has won five straight fights, I, I want to see an upset. I want to see Francis win it. Francis is a fucking monster. Yes. Love Francis. Next question. Do you guys think the Chargers are as legitimate, legitimate as, as a challenge they seem right now? And do they have a chance to get an AFC championship game? David. Okay, that's a two-parter. Um, are they a legit wildcard team? Yes, absolutely. Um, they're going to have a hard time beating Jacksonville in, in the divisional round. So, I meant to split that up into two questions. Yeah, it was kind of a one question. I mean, well, you answered both both of them in, with one second left. So, good job. Yeah, I mean, you know, they sh- they should they should win the division. They was looking for a pay raise this week. That was a good Bar- job. Yeah. You know. Next question. I know it's early in the season, but should but should OKC blow this up? Jeremy. They should just get rid of Carmelo Anthony. He's the problem. Carmelo's the problem. Not the problem. No, Carmelo's always a problem. Everywhere he goes, he's a fucking problem. That's why he's been in the league like eighty two years and he's never won a playoff series. That's he's not a, true. Uh, what has he won one playoff series? You use all your ten seconds on that. That was awesome. I'm, I believe I believe he went to the Western Conference Finals with the Nuggets. No, they didn't. And, go then, to the finals. and then they got yeah with the Western Conference Finals. I don't believe so. I mean, this was with Cornrow Mello. But either way, Carmelo <laughs> is a problem everywhere he goes. He's like right now at this point in his career, he was 15 years in. Come off the bench. You've got two mega stars. Okay, I'm sorry. You got one mega star and one star in Paul George, and then you just come off the bench. But whatever. Man, I just opened a floodgate on that one. Just get the fuck rid of Carmelo. <laughs> Carmelo's not the problem. Yes, he is. Next question. Where is LeBron playing next season, and why is it in L.A.? Let me give it to Aaron. Uh, Chicago. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, I would, if I had to take a guess, I, I think he's going to be in Cleveland next year. Um, there was a story I saw that it's rumored that he the going to Houston. Did you hear yeah. that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of exe- N- NBA executives said that they were uh, speculating that he would uh, consider going, and uh, of course he will, because LeBron will go anywhere he can to make his life easier. So, I I, I kind of agree with Aaron. I, at the end of the day, I still I I feel like he's going to stay in Cleveland. But I think L.A. is the place for him to go if he leaves Cleveland. I think he wants L.A. It's better for his brand. It's, it's the only place that can actually increase his already mega brand is L.A. But why I mean, not go to a place where you could follow in the footsteps of Jordan? You know? Because he should have done that the first time. Yeah. When, when they had Butler, when they had no, like a healthy Noah, like, I mean, you got to think this was what? When, when was the decision? Well, 20, but, uh, but 20, 20, well, LeBron, yeah, no, LeBron, 2011. but LeBron is going to go into a situation that is built for him to take it to the next level. But like Chicago is not built for him to walk in no. and already no. be in a great situation. No. So that's why Houston and LA, depending on how uh, Lonzo turns out and depending on what Paul George does in the off season, like if Paul George goes to LA and Lonzo ball has, you know, improved towards the end of this season, I think L.A. is a serious contender for LeBron. That was good. Well, thank you. <laughs> I like how some of these mini questions blow up into something. Like like that one uh, what OKC just got you fucking triggered. Yeah, man. Fuck, fuck Carmelo. Anyway. <laughs> fuck Westbrook. No, you know what? He's oh, fuck the both MVP, y'all. okay? <laughs> Next yeah, question. The fucking made-up triple-double shit. Just listen, you listen to Cowherd too much. Just leave Russell Westbrook alone. <laughs> Okay, and so will everybody else, and he can fucking die in, <laughs> die in Oklahoma. All right, next question, next question. Give me your top five quarterback wide receiver combos in the league. Oh, God. Wow. Mm. Um, we're going to have to ping this off each other. Um, 
I'm going to start. Cut- no, who did Jay no, no. Cutler throw all those touchdowns? To <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to ask all three of you guys this question under 10 seconds. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a second to marinate it. Marinate I'll, it. I'll, I'll I'll give you one right now. I think the best QB receiver combo in the NFL right now is Roethlisberger to Antonio Brown. That's one. Uh, an easy. If you're just going to reach for easy fruit, is uh, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. All right, um, David, David. Okay, this is complete homer, but I mean, even though Gronk is not a wideout, I mean Brady Gronk, you know, whatever. Um, Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson, that's in there. Um, going future wise, Deshaun Watson and Hopkins. Wait, whoa! Did you just pay Deshaun Watson a a compliment? Yes, I mean again. How much have you had to drink tonight? A lot, but it's not like he's horrible. <laughs> I'm just saying he's not like this upper echelon guy. However, those who have a massive connection, um, damn, David, I'm proud of you. Yeah, damn, and I don't like being proud of you. I, you. I know, but I, I mean, those two are, are, you know, of course, me. I'm trying to think fantasy wise, you know, going forward. Um, First off, I said your top, uh, your top five. You only gave me one. Well, you said we would bounce them off each other, so that's what we did. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's so hard to do five by myself. I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, I might get crucified for saying this, even though Jameis Winston isn't great. No. Um, no. Him, him, him to no. Mike Evans is a no. good combination, though. <laughs> no. More so the Mike Evans side. No. I love how you say that with full confidence. There. No. Well. No. We, I, I think a better. I, I think know. a better combo. Hey, I think a better combo is uh, Jameis and uh, Deshaun Jackson. When no, he not, not at him when no. he was eating the W. Oh, no, okay. Uh, when you know Jackson what? was eating the. Okay, was, Derek, Derek Carr, Amari Cooper. If what? if Amari was the a guy drop that leads the and drops. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Philip Rivers and Keenan Allen. I mean, okay, uh, okay. can we can we go back in time and say Brady and Cooks before Cooks got destroyed on Monday Night Football because Cooks was having a great was year. was the question who's the best or who's our favorite? Um, it was kind of like the top five. Just yeah, combo, just top five. Combos in the league. Okay. The, and uh, Drew if, Brees, Mike Thomas. No. If, can we can we back up five years and say Dalton and uh, Green? I was just gonna say that, but I figured <laughs> I was gonna get gang raped if I said that. That's that's not bad. That, that no, but uh, it that was that was one question, and we didn't prepare for anything tonight. So that would have been one question that would have worked with getting some prep on that one, because that's a that's a it's a tough question, to off the top of your head. Yeah. So, but I, I would say Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown are hands down the the, the best combo in the league right now. So. Well, it kind of blew up into a big, good debate. So, yeah, it's always good. We love debate. You didn't oh, know yeah, who was a better receiver. <laughs> I, look, I, I I was fighting for Julio all year, and when he made that drop in in the end zone, and they lost that game. I mean, when you're when it's that close, I mean, I still would take Julio over Antonio Brown. But the fact is, is Brown is is producing more. He's off the charts this year, so I, I'm giving him the slight edge, based on. The, information we have but if i'm picking i'm taking julio all day you know now that i'm thinking about it there's really not that much quarterback wide receiver combos that i can think of off the top of my there, head there really isn't i mean yeah because i'm trying i'm going through the league right now i can't really think of any well half of them are hurt and if and if i can combine two to what jeremy and david Lorock did and go a tight quarterback to a tight end and go back in time a few years drew Brees and uh Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham was a great yeah. combo. Yeah, I got, I got one for you, Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall. <laughs> oh wow! In the Denver days, <laughs> straight Denver. Okay. Days. Hey, uh, but I would say no. the best the best combo in the league. If you want to go back a few years ago, was Geno Smith and the opposing defense. Like that was an incredible, incredible combo there. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say it too. Tim Tebow in the ground before Lil Rock says it. It was coming. So, I know. I could look. I could see it in your eyes. <laughs> if you have this certain look, I guess triggered Tim Tebow. <laughs> All right. So that will do it for our half-ass rapid fire section. <laughs> that was uh, fun. Yeah. Those those are some really good questions. I really appreciate everyone uh, submitting those questions for us. So special shout out to everyone who did that to us. Um, so now we'll move on to our games of the week in the NFL, and we'll start with the Chargers at the Chiefs. 
Um, this game is being played on Saturday instead of Sunday. This is the only uh, week where we're getting four football days in a row. So we have a Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and a Monday game, which is pretty decent. But no one will give, gives a shit about the Thursday night game because everyone will be watching Star Wars. So whoop, whoop. Kansas City has won seven in a row against the Chargers. So, Aaron, do you think they'll keep that streak alive, or do you think the Chargers will win this one? Um, I think the Chargers win this one, actually. I think this is a game that the Chargers need to win. Um, smoke and mirrors on the other side of the ball. So, <laughs> uh, but I, but I do, I do believe that uh, that the Chargers take this game um, because they need it more. So, yeah, Chargers. I'm going Chargers. Um, David. I want to say Chargers uh, because I hate Kansas City. Why do you but hate Kansas Arrowhead City? Arrowhead is extremely difficult because they're it's gimmick shit. Are you still salty and, about Week One? Uh whatever. And <laughs> you know Andy Reid is is going to botch something up. Um, their secondary is awful. Um, but the fact that it's in KC on a short week, even though it's still a day, it's. I don't trust Anthony Lynn to prepare anything, let alone a football team on the road. Um, so I think Kansas City wins. I got Kansas City. Um, and I know that, that the smart money is going to be on San Diego. Or is it San Diego? Where the hell are they now? They, Either way. But, yes, that is accurate. The, the yeah. smart money is on the Chargers. Yeah. I, so, I mean, that's, that's the smart pick is the Chargers. But uh, I just feel that uh, Kansas City with their, you know, winning streak to start the season, then they fell off the map off the earth and uh now they've you know got a good win under their belt and i I mean alex smith is having a great season he really is and i like alex smith i'll never call him a top five top even top 10 he's not even a top 10 quarterback but he's just he's a solid quarterback and he, he always has been he's very consistent even when the team around him isn't very good so i got the chiefs in this one in a close game i think it's gonna be a really good game I will pick the Chargers as well in this matchup. We all agree? The San Diego Chargers or the Los Angeles? San, San Diego. Well, or? well the, the seven-game win streak against the Chargers uh, was when they were in San Diego. Right. So, so new era, maybe? The game has changed. The game has changed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Rams at Seattle. A Seahawks win would put them in the tie for the NFC West lead with the tiebreaker. The Rams are looking to get a nice win here. And after what happened last week when Seattle faced the Jags, um, maybe they'll, hopefully they'll probably bounce back, but I don't know. So, Jeremy, what do you think of your favorite team here? And do you think they'll get a win? Or do the Rams stomp their ass? Fuck Seattle. The Rams are going to stomp their ass. Um, next I question. Hate, yeah, next question. No, but I do think that uh, – Look, Russell Wilson's having a really great year, and uh, he's the only guy that can even be respected on that team as a human being. Um, and I do, I do like Russell Wilson. I, I'm very critical of him when people start to try to put him in that elite status and when people try to claim he's the MVP, all that stuff. But I, I really do r- like him as a person, and I think he's a good player, and he's an exciting player to watch. So he's going to keep him in the game. But at the end of the day, the Rams just have too many pieces, and uh, Seattle's way too banged up right now. Um, so I'm definitely taking the Rams in this one. But I, I think it's going to be a little uh, – uh, Wilson's going to keep you in the game, but it's Rams. Yeah, because he's responsible for what, 86% of their offense? Uh, total I'm not, no, it's one of those dumbass ESPN stats. I mean, you can make oh, him – Actually, I got the stat from David. So, yeah, I mean – I believe it's uh, – uh, I, I believe he's on pace for 92%, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, just like when he broke uh, when the last week when he broke the record for most fourth quarter touchdown passes. It's like, okay, whose record did he break? Yeah, Eli Manning. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. It's because you know good quarterbacks aren't playing late into the fourth quarter in garbage time. So congratulations on breaking Eli Manning's record. The goat, Aaron. The goat. Um, I'm taking the Rams in this one. Uh, historically, the past few seasons, even when the Seahawks were like really good going to the Super Bowl Seahawks, uh, full defense. The Rams were always that team that got a win on them throughout the season. So uh, I like uh, St. No, St. L.A. in this one. Yeah. <laughs> were you try- <laughs> oh, you're trying to say St. Louis. St. Louis. Okay. No. I, I, it's, really, it's really hard to think of them outside of San Diego. Just for me, I, it just doesn't compute. The Los Angeles Rams. 
Um, Mr. LaRock over there. Did I say um, San I, Diego? I yeah. want to pick Seattle. Um, I do, but their defense is missing so many pieces. Bobby Wagner got hurt. Um, Wright might not play. Um, I just, I mean, Russ is that guy. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's going to be the Rams. I will pick the Rams. Is it Rams across the board or did Jeremy pick Seattle? No, it's Rams. Oh, no, it's Rams across the board. So, so that means Seattle wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because apparently, uh, did you pick Oakland last week, Mr. David? Yes, I did. And I, I seriously thought their pass rush was, was going to get after Alex, and I was dead wrong about that. All right, next matchup. We have the Packers at Carolina. A.A. Ron makes his return this week. And, of course, we talked about that a little bit earlier, so we'll see how this matchup goes. Um, I know everyone's getting all hyped about him returning, but we'll have to see how that injury does, especially with that throwing shoulder he's got. Um, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Newton and the Panthers, however, they're a question mark. Um, they lost to New Orleans, but they were a clutch against the Vikings. Uh, which Panthers team will show up in this matchup? Mm, well, I don't know. We'll have to see. So, Jeremy, who do you got in this one? Hmm, this is a tough one um, because we don't know which – which Aaron Rodgers is showing up. Um, and but, but hell, we don't know what Panthers team is showing up because we never know what Panthers team is showing up every week. Um, but I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers um, because, I, I, again, I think the team is going to come out. Uh, their morale is going to be super high, super excited. Uh, obviously, ESPN is uh, creaming all over themselves because uh, the greatest quarterback in the history of uh, civilization is returning. And, um, but I think the team's going to be really, really motivated. And, uh, you know, Carolina, Carolina won last week, correct? So, yeah, so they'll probably yeah, lose so, this week. So, yeah, so I mean, so they'll be due to come out and, you know, do what they do. So, uh, I'm going to go with Green Bay, but obviously it all comes down to Rodgers and how he could, how he's able, able to perform. He could come out in his first few throws and start grimacing and, and they may have to pull him. So, um, if Rodgers is there and he's at least 70, 75%, definitely going with Green Bay. Aaron? Uh, I really wish I could pick no one in this game to win, um, and it ends in a 0-0 tie. Uh, these are two teams that I <laughs> highly dislike. Um, I, and where's the game at again? They are at Carolina. At Carolina. Um I don't know, man. Um, I, it, it's a really hard choice for me to, to try to pick between these two teams, but I, I think I would lean towards uh, Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers coming back. Okay. David? Give me the Carolina Panthers and Cam. Um, even though he's been struggling passing offensively, if you need to get back on track, just face uh, ha-ha Clinton Dix and that Green Bay secondary. Um Aaron's going to be rusty. Even if he's 100%, he's still going to be rusty. And I'm sorry, when you're facing Luke Keekley and the formidable Panther, you know, defense, um, and plus Carolina needs it to, to at least keep pace in, in, in the South, um, I like Carolina. That is such a funny name. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. So you mentioned that uh, Carolina lost to New Orleans, Bryson. Yes. Yeah. You left out that they also lost to the Bears. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll make sure I'll give you a special shout out then. Um, who did you guys pick again? Uh, Jeremy and I took Green Bay. Okay. David took, I took uh, Carolina. Carolina. I think I'm going to go with Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't sound very convincing. Sounds it's good not. then. It's yeah, a, I mean, it's a I'll question take that mark. W. I think I'm going to go with this uh, Green Bay team, this Georgia Green Bay team. Like, that's how you sounded like. Like, you're so unsure of anything. I mean, I'm not unsure about that one. So I'm just like they have the, green, have the, they, have the they have the Georgia logo next to their name. So I'm gonna go with CM. <laughs> That's how bad it sounded. All right, all right, and our last one, which is probably the game of the week here, yeah, we have the Patriots at Pittsburgh. Um, Brady owns the upper hand in the rivalry against Big Ben, winning seven of the uh, last nine matchups, including the AFC matchup game last year. The Patriots will have their hands full with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. 
and they'll also be looking to uh, make a comeback after the loss on Monday night against Jay Cutler. Aaron, we'll start with you first. I saw that. <laughs> Aaron, we'll start with you first. Then we'll go to the two Patriots guys over there. What do you think about this one? Man, this is tough, dude. And I really actually do believe that this is the game of the week. Um, like I said earlier, coming off of a loss to Jay Cutler, uh, a New Orleans team, or excuse me, New England team uh, coming off that loss is scary to play. Um, it's just it's tougher for me to pick right off the bat, though, because I feel like if this was in New England, I would hands down take New England. Um, it's a, I guess it's a little going to be a little tougher since it's a road game, but uh, I I still take New England in this game just because of the fact that they're coming off that loss and they're just going to solidify the AFC, make a statement with this game. But for fantasy purposes, I'm playing Ben Roethlisberger, so I hope he throws another 500 yards and uh, if he loses, oh well. Um, Jeremy. Uh, this is uh, the best thing that happened to New England was losing to Miami last week. To uh, who? To, to Miami. Oh. Dan Marino and Miami. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, New England, this is a must win game for New England in terms of the playoff picture. Tough, tough opponent. I know a lot of people are down on Pittsburgh, um, because they're winning a lot of close games. Uh, but the last time I checked, it's the NFL, and everybody is pretty competitive for the most part. And uh, whether you're winning close games or not, as a win's a win, and it's not college football. So, uh, so I think, and you have a great quarterback, and you have the best receiver in football as it stands right now in terms of production. So, this is not going to be an easy game for New England. New England's coming in with a lot of motivation. Uh, tough loss on national TV, a, a really, really terrible loss, actually. One of the worst performances I've seen from a Bill Belichick coach team in, in years. So there's a lot of uh, reasons to believe that New England is going to come in and, and steamroll, but I don't think they're going to steamroll. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I think it's going to be something like that Baltimore-Pittsburgh game last year, but I, I definitely picked New England to win, you know, something like a 37-35. I mean, it's going to be – one of those games so but anybody that thinks that that New England's going to just roll over this team I, I just don't see it happening um when Jay Cutler can slice you up Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown definitely can slice you up David um so <laughs> New England will blow the doors off Pittsburgh you've got to be kidding me it's it's the fact that New England has so much real estate in Mike Tomlin's head. The fact that he literally came out today and said, you know what? I, I think that we can play man to man against New England. Well, that's because your zone blitz scheme doesn't work. Tom Brady has never thrown an interception against a Mike Tomlin coach defense ever 22 and Oh, I'm going to laugh when that happens now. And just the fact that the Miami, the Miami game was a clunker. Gronk is that important. Um, they had three key pieces missing on defense. Um, they have the, they have the corners to, to stop, um, you know, Brown and Juju, uh, Bell's going to get his, that's fine. As long as he doesn't bust up the big runs, but offensively, they gave up 150 yards to Alex Collins and Joe Flacco. What okay, but, but Deion so, Lewis is going to do. So are you going to give a score? Cause I, I'm really interested to, um, 30, really. You really think they're going to stop the offense of Pittsburgh? I, I, I'm yes. with you. New yes. going to put points on the board. But I, I get it. Belichick always takes your best piece away. He's going to take Antonio Brown out of the it's game. It's going to have a snowball effect. They're going to be down, let's say, 10-3 or let's say 17-3 or 14-3. They're going to get down, and then they're going to have to start, start pressuring. And Ben's going to start forcing it. And the big plays aren't going to happen. They're going to bend but don't break. Bell's, Bell's going to get his. I'm, I'm predicting he has probably 85 yards, maybe one score. Um, but the issue is Antonio Brown's not going to go off for fucking 200 yards. They let Joe Flacco drop 40 points. The 30th-ranked quarterback dropped 40 points in Pittsburgh. You can't Tom, spell elite without Joe. Oh, wait, no, that was Eli. Never mind. Yeah, and <laughs> and so, so, for one, you have a pissed-off Tom. Uh, and by the way, so the last three weeks, he's, he's missed the first couple practices with his Achilles. Oh, he was back today practicing. Suddenly, right? 
because everybody knows. What was, that- the, what was the Kenny Britt signing for? Was that Belichick basically letting the receivers know, like, you, you so, are on uh, the- notice? Just, just the fact that they don't have a physical, a, a big physical wide receiver that that can go up and jump the ball. Hogan plays small, Cooks is small, Amendola small. Britt is six four, two thirty, and he still has enough talent to beat a DB one on one. So I think it's a probably, good signing. That's yeah, a, it's I mean, a good signing. It can't hurt. It, yeah. you know, it can't hurt. So they'll give him two or three routes to go run, and you know that'll be it. But the issue is Gronk and the Shazier injury. I. I hope personally that, you know, everything goes well with his recovery. But when you put Harrison on a snap count because he can no longer cover, so he's literally a third down linebacker. He's a pass rusher, et cetera. When, when you have Harrison not playing first and second down and you don't have Shazier, who's going to cover the middle of the field? What does, what does New England do better than any other team in the league? They're going to spread you out with Dion and Rex, and they are going to gash you. And – and Tomlin came out again today and said, hey, you know, we're going to play man. Really? Good luck stopping Cooks. Uh, it, it, again, it's – some teams own certain schemes. Tom owns Pittsburgh. I mean, that's, that's it. It's fact. Well, I'm, I'm still going to say it's going to be a high-scoring affair for both teams. So, we shall see. It'll be interesting. I say 35-21. <clears throat> they, they win by two possessions. I think it's going to come down to the last play of the game. Whoever has the ball last will win the game. And it'll be Pittsburgh. You know. Come on, you know I like to poke the anthill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. That'll do it for this episode of the Sports Wars Podcast. So now we'll do some shout outs. Jeremy, my friend, we'll start with you over there. I want to give a shout out to Jimmy Duncan in the Facebook group. <laughs> He's our resident troll, our Carolina Panthers fan. Uh, this dude is just, uh, he's so good at, at keeping discussions going. And uh, I really appreciate everything he brings to the community. So a uh, big shout out to Jimmy and, and shout out to everybody in the Sports Horse group. It's a great community and uh, really happy that you guys are enjoying these podcasts. And also, I mean, t- tomorrow's the big day. We're recording this on Wednesday. Tomorrow's the big day. Star Wars The Last Jedi finally is here. Bryson will be with me here in Pensacola, Florida for the Geeks and Gamers meetup. We're going to have probably 30, 40 people here from the community. Um, the movie starts at 6 p.m. Central Time. We're going to have a table set up at the theater. We're going to be giving away Funko Pops. Uh, we're going to be doing trivia. It's uh, going to have Geeks and Gamers t-shirts. I'm going to speak to the theater before the movie starts. It's uh, incredibly exciting. And uh, I can't wait. This is one of the most exciting uh, movie premieres I've ever uh, been to. So shout out to everyone that has been supporting us. And uh, thank you, guys. Can't wait to meet some of you in person for the first time. Aaron, my friend. Uh, shout out to you guys, first and foremost, for having me back on. Um, to Geeks and Gamers as a whole, uh, check out – if you like video games, check out the podcast I'm on, Geek Pulse Gaming. Um, it's kind of cool, I guess, if you're into that sort it's of thing. A great, it's, a, it's a great podcast. Yeah. It really is. Um, shout out to Sports Wars, uh, everybody in it. Um, and if I could just take a quick moment to kind of pump the brakes on something – uh, let's pump the brakes on calling Tom Brady the greatest of all time. Um, when you when you when you lose when you lose to a quarterback like Jay Cutler, <laughs> can you really call yourself the greatest of all time? So let's just David, pump the brakes there. So David's about to throw his fucking headset over there. That's a that's an actual fact. That's not a narrative. That's not an agenda. Jay Cutler. Smoking Jay Cutler. Smoking Jay. <laughs> but thanks again for having me back, guys. Seriously. Thank you. Anytime, sir. Anytime. David, do you have any shout outs? Shout out to my doctor for reopening my blood pressure medicine. <laughs> um, no, just, you know, the group. Good, good groups of people. And hopefully the next, you know, three or four weeks we'll, you know, put a bow and a cherry on top of this fantastic NFL season. Hey, I want to I want to say one other thing too. Shout out to uh, Coach Bill Belichick for his amazing press conference <laughs> after the Monday night no game. Shakes. <laughs> hey, Coach, 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 could you uh, could you tell us what happened on that onside kick? 
they recovered it. <laughs> like that was his answer. It was so beautiful. Anyway, that's it though. Oh, yeah. shout out to Roy Morgan also. I was Not just about to say that. He's a little, yeah. he's a little under the weather, so. Uh, yeah, I hope yeah. you feel better, buddy. We've missed old Roy tonight. Coming in like this and talking about Georgia and Atlanta. I, I honestly can't believe that that there was a whole Sports Wars podcast without any false narratives pushed or agendas <laughs> from Jeremy. Like, no no eye test, nothing. Well, you, you did push a false narrative, but it's such an obvious false narrative, I felt no need to rebut the Jake and you, cover, and you And so. you pushed uh, Tim Tebow a little bit, too. We almost yeah. went down that I path. tried. I didn't want this to be the worst episode of all time if they weren't getting all the stuff that they're used to getting on a weekly basis. <laughs> but you made you made it up with Jake Hunter. <laughs> yes, you did. And shout out to everybody in the community, Jeremy, for the one who uh, asked me to do this podcast every week. I have fun doing it. And shout out to Star Wars because tomorrow's gonna be glorious. Boom! 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 boom. <laughs> hope you guys have fun and be safe and oh you're coming too asshole do a negative, negative. <laughs> that's way too many people <laughs> all right all right uh thanks again for tuning in with us everyone uh be sure to check us here next week when we sit and discuss sports happening all around us we'll see you guys